Hey boys and girls, Bored now, back with you and happy October, if this is the first video of mine you're watching this month, to mark the spooky season and as an exclusive on my Patreon page, I am going to be doing all of the first season of Creepshow, the Shudder exclusive anthology series based on the Stephen King short stories and also the comic books so I'm going to be doing it throughout the month and most of the episodes will be exclusive to Patreon you can access them just for a, a pound a month or a dollar a month if you like um, but this first one I, I am actually going to put out on YouTube so I'll make it available free for everyone after a few days at least so yeah, this is just something I thought I'd do as a little something extra for the month of October to sort of complement what I'm doing on the main channel with, like, the main horror rev reviews this month. So, okay, so this is episode one of Creepshow Season 1, and I, I will do the other seasons at some point. But episode one is, you've got two stories. The first story is Grey Matter. The second story is House of the Head. So full spoilers in case you've not seen these. They are on Shudder, of course. And first things first, what I enjoyed about this opening episode and, and the way it opens and this becomes like a, a little quirk throughout the episode is the way they sort of use like the comic format and the sort of quite retro pulpy aesthetic of like the comic so it opens with like the creep show comic itself as a visual and then you get like I guess like the answer to the, the crypt keeper but but the creep, the creep show sort of version. I'm not quite sure what the character's name is because I'm not not really seen like anything from Creep Show before. But yeah, we get him and he sort of flicks the comic pages and, and it it goes to the the title of the episode or the title of the story. So first of all, I just love that. I love like old school retro storytelling tricks like that. And it's something they do at times throughout the episode. So the opening, like, dialogue of the episode, as we hear it from the actor, we see it on the page as well, because this comes from comics. And then there's an example later on where it does, you know, sort of interact like the comic and what's happening on screen. So that sort of stuff I'm just a sucker for I really like it and it, it's just the right spirit for this kind of low budget but kind of old school quirky like sort of intimate type anthology type series so the first episode or the first story Grey Matter which comes from a Stephen King short story I tell you what I mean I was impressed off the back at the quality of the casting because you've got Jericho Esposito out of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, great actor, he's tremendous in, in those shows. You've got Saw himself, um, or, or Jigsaw himself, I should say, Tobin Bell, and you've also got Adrian Bobel, who's a, who's a really good sort of classic horror b move actress as well so they really knew what they were doing with the casting and different nods to horror fans in in the casting so gray matter is set at a seaside town and it takes place over a night where there's like this massive storm and powers out there's not a lot of like activity and this kid or this young guy anyway Timmy shows up at, at, at like this place and he starts telling the story about what happened to his dad and that his dad's in trouble and the, so you've got like sort of friend three friends really here you've got obviously the main cast as I said those three they're all like friends 
and the Adrian Burbell character talks the other two, the, the two guys, into going over to the place because they know the guy because he lives local to see what's going on. And that becomes like the sort of premise of the episode where they go over to investigate and slowly they start seeing what's, what's happened to him and, and that's where the horror side comes in and at the same time we get Jimmy talking to to the old woman the Adrian Barbell character and revealing what, the story of what what's been happening to his dad so it's cutting back and forth between the two and I enjoyed this one I re- first of all I really enjoy like seaside towns when there's like a, a, an atmosphere to them when there's like a storm and that that's used as like part of the plot and part of the tension and there's just something so cool about like these like old friends just sitting around reminiscing sort of telling stories and it's just a cool sort of spooky atmosphere because of like everything being done in like shadows or there's not much light anyway in this certain like like sort of there's just an intimacy to it. Obviously, as I said, they cast it really well. Uh, you've got, like, the distinct voices, Tobin Bell especially. But there's some good hammy acting and dialogue as well. I mean, th- these actors know what sort of thing they're in and they play it up nicely. I, I do enjoy, like, Tobin Bell being freaked out by how hot it is in the house, like, near the end, and there's, there's, like, 100 degrees in here, but in that classic husky Tobin Bell voice. And, and there are some, some like, amusing lines and quite hammy lines as well. Because um, even the guy, Timmy, I mean, I will say, compared to the other actors, I, I thought that actor was a bit wooden. I didn't think he was the best, and... When he first came in, I lost interest a bit in the story just because I wasn't that into him. I didn't find him too interesting. But then later on, because he's got this southern twang to his voice, I, I did actually find it quite funny when he was telling the story and you got these flashbacks. And it's just as, I swear, something crawled inside, in, inside and died. But it's like in this southern, this naive sort of southern type accent. It's like, I came home and found my daddy. <laughs> and it's just so funny. So the flashback stuff, it, it's the weakest stuff in the episode. Like the acting isn't very good. And, and it just looks bad. It just looks quite dreary and dry and dank. And it's because this is a low budget show. Whereas the other stuff in the episode, it sort of lends itself more to like the feel of a horror show. And it doesn't really matter so much, the lack of budget. But to do a good flashback, like a convincing flashback, you have to have a decent budget. Or you have to have like a a bit more of a a style, I guess. Um, So the flashbacks are definitely the weakest, but... I enjoyed the story, it was a lot of fun, good cast, some some good like hammy lines and some good practical effects as well when they come up against this creature at the end or this thing and the whole twist and (laughs) where it goes is is like really hilarious, Uh, you know, essentially, you know, the dad had he's a bit of a drunk and and it leads to this twist where he's actually been drinking. He got so hungry he started eating animals, which is pretty freaky, rather than food, because they're running out of food, they're a poor family, and he just mutates into, like, this, this monster, basically, and confronts the other two guys at, at his place, and... and Pretty, pretty creepy stuff, but once again, they do a good job of practical effects. But yeah, I kind of enjoy just how silly and over the top that twist is, because it's the sort of twist you wouldn't have seen coming, really. So, so that's that's cool stuff. So, story two, the House of the Head. The setup is then you've got this gal Evie who's really into dolls she's got a doll house her parents think this is good for her development 
and one day she notices a severed head in the dollhouse out of nowhere she hasn't put it there so she doesn't even recognize the toys so she obviously questions what's going on and that becomes the mystery of the episode and she only knows about it and it's it's about her reactions to this and and just strange things continuing to happen in the dollhouse like things being moved about with her without her knowing when she's not there and and just how she reacts to that so it's sort of from her point of view and we obviously get the horror plot and this story wasn't very good it didn't do much for me the premise was good I like the idea of the premise but there was a couple of things really first of all the characters weren't very interesting like Evie was a bit one no I didn't really get into her character the parents were were bland really they didn't add much to the story um there's some bad dialogue too i mean one of the worst lines i've heard in quite some time is when the mother says to the door to the toy store owner like she's got this line because they're sort of talking about how like playing with dolls is like important to a child's development and they're sort of giving it this big type speech and like because he has this line about it's the best way for them to figure out life I'm not sure it is but okay (laughs) and and then she the mother says I guess that's why they call them figurines (laughs) it's like come on that was terrible that really was bad so there's some bad lines of dialogues like that also it was a bit weird how the girl kept talking to the dolls like she literally had conversations with them because she's at least eight the girl so I mean I think eight is old enough to know that yeah they can't talk back sort of thing or but whatever she's in her own world and I guess it's partly for the viewer sort of thing but that that's a thing as well which i felt a bit distracting the other problem is then it's just not really that interesting like they don't make it that sort of spooky the premise it's just quite boring to watch visually it's not as good visually as you would think because a lot of it is just her seeing like then then things have been moved and then she like moves them back or she does something where she changes something in the house and she keeps coming back and seeing like things have gone wrong and and it's just not that interesting to watch like visually and and at one point she she tries to she goes to the the store and says she needs like something religious like a religious toy like a priest or something and the store owner doesn't have any but he says even better would be a Native American because that's really religious and so she takes the Native American and that sort of leads to like her sort of attempt to like exercise I guess the the sort of threat of of what's happening but as I said in the end it's really not very interesting like the premise is much more interesting that then the story turns out to be it's it's a bit bland that one so I I definitely prefer the first story so that's my review of the first episode of Shudder's Creep Show episode one so I'll be back with episode two in the coming days the only thing to say is thanks for being a patron if you're listening to this on patron If not, if you're listening to this on the main YouTube channel, I'll give Patreon a plug now. It's patreon.com slash board now for some extra perks. And you can pay, as as I said, a little as a dollar a month and you'll get these creep shows reviews for free. Well, not for free, but for that price a month as part of the deal. So thanks for listening again. Keep watching horror movies and horror TV. And I'll see you again soon.